None of us is ever really prepared for that moment when the thin shell of reality cracks and the world of unreality, the psychic world, is thrust upon us. Serves me right for patronizing you foreigners. It's a good thing you people keep a close watch on them. Morning, Carl. The gates, George. Well, at least you didn't call me a hun. Look, why didn't you tell her? Tell her what? If I wasn't a Nazi. I was. The Kaiser didn't use poison gas. Damn it. He did. Now look, you can't go on feeling guilty forever. Who has a better right? You should have heard Jolly Hair Gang when he pinned the Iron Cross on my flying jacket. He was most complimentary. Don't let my tea drinking deceive you. Um, where's Lois? At the doctor. Each month she gets bigger, more beautiful. And that bomb is also big and beautiful. Hmm? Uh, then you heard on the BBC, hmm? You're my BBC. That look on your face. How big is it? It's a 500 pounder, Carl. They found it when they were digging excavations for some new buildings. It's the fuse that has me baffled. Lois would murder you. If you would just look at the fuse, really, it is something that I've never seen in my life before. Look, Carl, please stop looking at me like that, will you? I was there, remember, when you told her once. Never again. Then why did you come? Because I'm frightened. Because you are stubborn. All you English are stubborn. First he drops them. Then he dismantles them. Why? On March 7th, 1943, during Carl Bremer's 28th bombing mission over England, his plane was hit by flak, and he was forced to parachute to Earth seven miles south of London. He was captured by farmers and finally interned in a prisoner of war camp outside the English town of Coventry. It still burns. I can't see three houses that haven't been smashed. How long can these fools hold out? Oh, by November it will be finished. November's not a bad month in Leipzig. I've sunbathed in November. At ease. I have a problem. As you can see, the town was pretty badly hit last night. The civil defense can't even begin to cope with it. What a pity. I realize that I can't force officers to help, but... Uh, Herr Colonel is correct. There must be a thousand people out there still buried in that wreckage. Some of them are still alive. Karl! Ich wusste immer, dass du eine Schwäche hattest. Sogar wenn wir in Training waren. Well, that's the last of them. I hope so. Well, we, we better clear out. One good sneeze and the whole place falls in.
It must be a dud. Not for sure. Then why didn't it go off? It could be a Zeitzunder. What's that? A bomb with a delayed action fuse. The Luftwaffe was working on such a bomb. There's a unit of engineers in the next town. We'll send for some sappers. How long? How do I know? It's about ten miles each way. Could be an hour. Is that our fault? Now, you... You be brave. Everything will work out. I know that type of bomb. They were starting to give us briefings. I know what to expect. It has a U-15 electrical fuse which doesn't become activated until after the bomb hits the earth. It could go off in two weeks. It could go off in two minutes. Are you people drop the bloody things, not me. I studied the bomb for almost a month. They blindfolded us and made us defuse a dummy bomb so that we would be prepared in case anything went wrong in flight. So? An electric magnet is needed, the kind they use in machine shops. If the fuse is a U-15, it can be made harmless by drawing the pinions into the bearings. You, you're a prisoner of war. You don't have to do this. If I didn't have to, I wouldn't. You'll have to talk sometime. A bomb is so much prettier than seen from the sky. And when it falls, it's so graceful. Like a trapeze artist in a circus. Spinning, and spinning, and spinning. <laughs> And then when it lands, it's like a, a lovely golden flower. Isn't it an ugly monster? Have you ever seen anything so repulsive like a mad dog? But then what harm can a mad dog do when you tear out its teeth? I could spend the rest of my life doing this. Turning every bomb in the world into a piece of junk. Then maybe I wouldn't have to burn in hell after all. Fraulein, if you have a God, and if he loves you, tell him now is the time to prove it. should be like this. My name is Lois. Lois. First, he dropped them. Then he dismantled them. Why? Now we know why. Now in 1949, here in London, where hundreds of unexploded bombs still remain undiscovered, we know why. Doesn't look too bad. It's good farther back, isn't it? The normal. Just be careful. Give me a hand. Here. Can I get your microphone up? Yes. And I'll take the vials back. Good. What's happening now? Captain Davis is going to start removing the fuse. Well, what's that for? I'll hook up to the tape recorder. What's the tape recorder for? Playback at parties? Should the bomb explode, there'd be a record which might tell us what not to do the next time. Baker 2, have you received my signals? Hello, George. The equipment checks out. I'm now going to try to work on the timer. Easy now. It's coming out. Coming out very... easily. 
slowly. Timer is clear. Good, good. I have the fuse. George Francis. What a clumsy clot I am. What do you make of that fuse, Carl? Looks like a multiple. Well, then taking out the first one might make it operational, eh? Who else is dead I can work on it? I can work on it. But your teat? Well, I can radio battalion for help. No time. No time. A doctor. Give me a high phone and then get out of here, both of you, will you? Then ass. Take him back to the control lorry. This is the last time. I mean it. Look, Carl. Come on, snap. This isn't my idea. Carl. From now on, just forget where I live. I've expiated all my sins. And the idea of being a hero nauseates me. And the hero was sweating like a pig. that fuse. There seemed to be another wire there. All right. I have the fuse. Wait a minute. There seems to be a second. This is ridiculous. and try and ground the trembler properly. Nine. I'm so out of condition. I think I'll rest a moment. Sorry for getting angry at you like that before. But Lois would leave me. I mean it. You know why she went to the doctor today? So that he would talk me out of a ritual which has been observed in our province for only 1,500 years. For as far back as I can remember, every time a baby was born in our village, the father was right there, out walking up and down the village, like an idiot. And instead of the doctor slapping the babies behind, the father breathed the first breath into the mouth of the child. Ich übergebe den Geist des Lebens von denen die vor dir fallen. From those who have come before you. I pass on the breath of life. <laughs> How does that sound so barbaric? Yes, it does. If I don't do it, don't ask me why. I would worry about that child his whole life through. All right. Now we try again. Carl! Carl, why is the door locked? 
They're stubborn, back in half an hour. Stubborn. Now here's something funny. A little chunk of green metal. The wire goes right through it. <laughs> Just some oxidation. A little tug. Be careful, Carl. Now the wire's coming out easily. Easily. E Let's go on, Carl. I'm disgusted with you. It's such a beautiful baby. Do you know how many women would give ten years of their life for a baby like that? Well, won't you at least look at him? No. Then what in heaven's name are we supposed to do with him? Don't use heaven's name to me. You need that baby more than he needs you. You need him to hold on to reality. What's so marvelous about reality? Do you believe there is a heaven, Doctor? I do. And someone in heaven cares about us? I believe that too. I won't disillusion you, Doctor, by asking heaven to send back my love. Mrs. Bremer, would you kindly tell your husband that this hospital has certain rules and regulations? What are you talking about? Well, the nursery alarm light went off. I went to the nursery and he had the baby in his arms. Is something wrong? This is my first night and everything was going so well. There's no one out there. But he was there just a moment ago. Well, he couldn't have been. But he said it was his baby. No, let's go he back to your... He was standing there with the baby in his arms. Go back to your duties. Wait. As though he were breathing life into the child. Yes. What did he say? He was saying something tender and soft. But I couldn't understand it. Ich übergeben den Geist des Leben von denen, die davor waren. It sounded like that. Nurse, you don't know the situation. I order you back to your duties. You're doing this woman irreparable harm. Is she, doctor? Give me my baby. Give me my love. From those who came before you, I pass on the breath of life. Eleven years have gone by, and still Nurse O'Brien of London, England, is absolutely certain that Carl Bremer stood in this nursery five days after his death, holding his infant son in his arms. The doctor in the case, while convinced of her sincerity, is nonetheless certain that such an occurrence is absolutely impossible. Carl's widow, Lois, who now lives in America, refuses to speculate one way or the other. Though there is about her a certain serenity that impresses everyone she meets. Understandably, the incidents surrounding the act of death have contributed much to the literature of psychic phenomena, all of which strains the credulity of the skeptic. And yet, who knows? Certainly as incredible as any case history from the unknown, is the miracle that we can do nothing but accept. Because there it is. There it is. Who in the world, skeptic or believer, could ever begin to explain the phenomenon of life?